commentary. We are your popper commentators, Michael Pechek and Adrian Guarzalez. It me. How's it going? It's good. Uh, we're here on this rainy day in Austin, Texas. Yeah, what it's, color it's, commentary? It's actually miserable weather. And as anyone watching on YouTube surely has noticed at this point, we're here in video. And you can see our faces. You know, it brings a whole new meaning to the old adage, video killed the radio star. <laughs> I guess I guess podcasts are kind of the, the radio of the 21st century. The new timey radio as opposed to the old timey radio. Yeah. Um, um, F&M. f and I played Boros Tokens and I got to uh, cast four, two sides of each, uh, rally the peasants against Mike. Yep. Fifteen. Fifteen them. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's real hard to come back from that. It, well, it, it turns out that Battle Screech is, is just good, as, yeah. as is Rally the Peasants. Um, interesting thing, though, I don't think you ever um, rallied me for lethal. You just rallied me to the point where I couldn't get back. Right, and, um, I, you know, there were a couple times where I thought, should I should I save this? But you, you, were, playing a, you were playing a Blue Black Alchemy, and I knew that yep. you may have had sweepers or counter spells, and I did it at a time you were tapped out. And so I think when that deck... Can get in the damage it wants to go ahead and get in the damage you yeah. know because it doesn't it doesn't because then it, you know you were at five and then it's like a, a bolt two bolts or two blasts away from like clinching the game so yeah it, i i think it's really the combination of being able to have that really really good alpha strike and on top of that having the bolts to back it up right um i played Alchemy, I went one, two drop. Uh, I got paired up against Nathan on teachings, and that is a miserable matchup. Uh, it it yeah. basically came down to him resolving, what was it, like three think twice and then uh, forbidden alchemy and just getting so ahead on cards. So much value. Yeah. Uh, some uh, That's what most control matchups come down to is who draws more cards. Fun fact. I mean, I guess that's true of any magic game, really. Not always. If if you kill them before they can draw cards, the card draw doesn't matter. Well, yeah, but at that point, they have not drawn cards. True, true. Um, this guy. This guy. Um, <laughs> but 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 good night. You you wound up going 3-1, right? Yes, I did. Uh, what did you drop a match to? Um, Delver. Delver, okay. Which I actually yeah. don't think is a bad matchup. It's just that... Just didn't line up, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes that's how it happens. Um, this week we have a deck tech fr- from friend of the show, uh, J Siri eighty four on Twitter. Um, cool dude. Uh, I enjoy a lot of his builds. Um, and he's been toying around with Grixis Tron. Um, and this is kind of like the Marasa Tron lists that we've been seeing. Is it actually playing Pulse of Marasa? It is. Would it um, then not be wet jund? Wet jund. Ooh. Moist jund. That's just that's just the worst. Um do we not have actual names for the four colors now? Yeah. With the uh, commander product? I mean, why would you give up moist jund? It rolls All off sorts the of reasons. It rolls <laughs> off. <laughs> um but it really is like a very small splash of green and kind of goes more into the red removal, the black removal, and counter magic. Um, so actually, actually, let's let's just start with the creatures. It's it's got two mnemonic walls, five mana for an O four that gets you back a instant or sorcery, um, three mole drifters, five mana draw card, three mana evoke it. Um, you cards. get a two two flyer. Oh yeah, two cards. Duh. Um, then we've got three Seagate Oracles. Uh, one three that when it ETBs, you get to uh, slight a hand. Look at the top two. Pick one goes into your hand. The other goes to the bottom of the library. Mm-hmm. Um, Better than sleight of hand, though, because now you get a creature. Yeah. You, you're left over with a one three afterwards, which is a surprisingly relevant body. Um, then we got a copy of Ulamog's Crusher because this is Tron and why not, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with you. Then in our spell suite, we got copy of cap size because it just lets you s- end a game, right? Caps, like it cap size lock, cap size lock, not fun, very effective. Um, two copies of condescend, um, 
it's X and a blue counter spell unless they pay X and then you scry two. In my experience, all control players are condescending. <laughs> um, and notable, sometimes you don't use this so much for the counter spell as you do the scry. Um, right, because it, whether or not they pay the mana, you get the scry. Yeah. Um, then two copies of good old counter spell. Um, copy of Echoing Truth. The... Uh, the bounce everything with the same name. Mm-hmm. Um, t- oh, sorry. One electricery. One uh, main deck electricery? Yep. Intriguing. Probably for Boros tokens. Oh, yes. Um, the, dom- the, new, the new force and popper. Then we've got three copies of Lightning Bolt. Okay. Um, Copy of a magma spray. Uh, that's the instant shocker creature. If it dies, exile it. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, Surprise me at graveyard recursion. Two copies of mana leak. Just easier to cast counter spell. Yeah, mana leak is its own beast. Yeah, um, it's all right. Value goes down late game, right. but early game. It's basically easier to cast counter spell, right? Right. Can we get a um, remand in here? What? So can we get a remand in here, please? I I'm, I'm kidding with you. We've got memory lapse. Which, that doesn't draw you a card. No, but it makes your opponent draw a card they already had. That's it's different. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> it's still a form of card advantage. No, but the thing about remand is you can remand your own spell in response to True. getting countered. True. Um then two copies mystical teachings why not we've got we've got 16 instants here so seems good mm-hmm. um one main deck pulse of marasa just really powerful helps you uh hold your own against land destruction post right. board right um for sorceries two copies of chainer's edict um it's an edict with flashback. Seems good, especially when you can hit seven mana. Right. Um, three copies, compulsive research. Um, three mana, draw three, discard either two cards or a land. So we've got compulsive research, mnemonic wall. Do we have a ghostly flicker in there? No. No, no combo out. Um, but notably... You can compulsive research and then later pulse back a land. Right. Um, or a creature. Right. Um, then the big reason to be black, even cards justice. It's a good card. It is. It's a very good card. It's also card. a good reason to run Seagate Oracles. Yeah. Um, so for those who haven't had the pleasure of interacting with this spell, um, even cards justice, two and two black deal two damage to each creature in each player. Then on top of that, it's got buyback for three. Right, so, so seven mana repeatable, two damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, the land base, obviously we start with four of each of the Tron pieces. Mm-hmm. Then three Swiftwater Cliffs, the Is It Gain Land, um, three Dismals, the uh, Demir mm-hmm. game land and a singleton Bloodfell caves, the Rakdos skilled. So no, um, uh, well, well, we got, we got, we got a little bit more. Okay. We've got two Schumer grottos. That was the one I was about to ask about. Um, and a single haunted Fengraf. Haunted Fengraf on Moldrifter, pretty good. On Moldrifter, on Crusher. Yeah, basically yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's random, but yeah, it's still good. And there's no real way to call your graveyard. There's no delve or anything. Right. So ideally, you want to use this with one target in the graveyard. Um, right. But then also a copy of the expedition map. Um, one copy of expedition map? Yeah. Um, and four copies prophetic prism. 
So okay. some card draw and some fixing. Yeah, I feel like Prophetic Prism is it's one of those like ubiquitous Tron cards because they have all this colorless mana and they really need to filter into the colors they need, especially if they're three color like this. And especially with double colored casting costs and like cor- uh, Justice. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, there are no green lands. No. Right. Um, so you're relying wholly on the Prophetic Prisms and the Shimmering Grottos to produce green mana. Yes. Um, so, interestingly, only one expedition map. Right. And I was talking with Jason, and he said, you, you care more about getting your colored sources online instead of Tron, unless Tron is going to win you the game. Right. Like, if your opponent just can't deal with Crusher, you want to blitz right for Tron. Um, okay. But otherwise, you'd rather have Counterspell or Chainer's Edict or any of these other spells up. Right, there's a lot of double cost. Yeah. Um, sideboard, we got Ancient Grudge, Diabolic Edict, Pair of Dispels, a Doom Blade, Echoing Decay, another Justice, um, two Hydra Blast, a Magma Spray, Negate, Pulse of Marasa, Pyroblast, Shattering Pulse. Shattering Pulse is a spicy one. Why don't you read that one out? Uh, one in red, destroy an artifact, buyback three. Pretty good in a Tron deck. Um, have you ever faced uh, off against this? Mm, no, but I know what it does. Um, well, it's it's good, right? Well, right. Yeah. Um, if they can get Tron online, and I think this is one of the cases he was talking about when he was saying, you know, sometimes Tron is the wind path. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you can just completely lock an affinity player out of the game, threat or no. Like at any point yeah. during the game, you could just obliterate them. Versus, say, Gorilla Shaman where it's mostly the lands it's mostly the lands because the gorilla shaman also cannot kill creatures yeah this is just let's nuke the board right and i will figure out a way to way to win um so this is a take on a deck that's doing pretty well right like marasatron is showing up every couple of days and this one kind of removes the focus from Marasa tr- or Pulse of Marasa and moves it more towards some good removal and, you know, board wipes. Like mm-hmm. there's a main deck electricery. Right. And there's actually not one in the sideboard. And sorry about that, folks. We just had a quick little in studio mishap. This is. First time recording with video attached, and uh, not everything's going to be smooth, right? Um, but so, so this is a Tron list that focuses more heavily on board wipes and less heavily on you know spot removal, right. even though it still has it because you know there is still Reanimator occasionally. There are still you know um, the Delverfiend decks where they have relatively few threats, and an Edict is just great against them, right? Mm-hmm. So. I think this is an interesting take on it because it's kind of targeting, you know, we've seen a lot of Boros tokens. Um, Stompy's still decently big. Um, The only thing I can't think of that this does, the the only thing that comes to mind off the top of my head that this doesn't have a good matchup against pre-board would be um, Affinity. Right, because normally Tron lists rely heavily on Finger Marauder in order to beat Affinity, and this is not playing Finger Marauder. And it seems like they are a little, you know, it's the, the teachings problem, right? They have all these, you know, slow and not very good Board wipes against four fours. Well, more more specifically, you know, um, it's Fangrid and Marauder doesn't even fit into the game plan of this, right? You're only you only have five artifacts and only one of them self sacrifices. So right. this again, like the, the Marasatron list play much more like a control deck that happens to have Tron basically to enable win cons, um, versus the Rugtron list, where it's like, I'm gonna blitz out a Fangrid Marauder cycle a couple of uh, uh, stars and spheres and just go nuts. Right. Um, 
so this is I like it. Um, I, I've I've played I've played Marasa Tronless. The only thing I could think of that this could use is perhaps a um, Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder. Yeah, yeah. It seems um, like you might need one Rolling Thunder, and, and maybe instead of like trickery. And, and and Jason mentioned, you know, you could easily pop a Rolling Thunder into this list, and things would be fine, right? right. Um, again, you know, it's got a bunch of mana fixing. It's already got red sources in the deck. Rolling Thunder is not going to be as hard to cast here as it might be in a traditional Rubtron list where you've got like the Shimmering Grottos and or m- maybe not even the Shimmering Grottos. Some of the lists I've been seeing haven't even run Shimmering Grotto. They just run Prophetic Prisms and then Stars and Spheres mm-hmm. and occasionally even Terrarian, which uh, I disagree with. <laughs> I would not play Terrarian. That's no, list. no, no, no. Um, but I think this kind of wants to highlight something that I've been looking to, you know, point out this isn't wholly separate from Marasatron at all right but it does things differently enough where it kind of attacks along a different angle right right um and that kind of segues us into the maybe board and the maybe board this week we're talking about uh even cards justice so to review two and a black um ping everything for two and hit each opponent each player for two right and this is a traditional win con in teaching lists yeah uh that also play um the life gain talisman uh pristine talisman yeah pristine talismans that there's no life cost to them and then they just nuke you for two every turn in the late game yeah um and in this list you really only have the pulse of marasa but it's worth noting that uh with the two main board uh what do you call it? Mnemonic walls. You can create a loop. Right. And I also don't think that, um, Evan Carr's justice is really like, you can win with it, but I don't think it's like really the main win condition here. Yeah. I think, I think in this deck, you're more looking, you're more looking to just use it to stabilize a board wipe. And, you know, occasionally, yeah, I'm sure two damage extra a turn when you've got your opponent pretty on the ropes and you're swinging in with, um, your Seagate Oracles. But yeah, there, there are just so many decks that just absolutely fold to Evan Carr's Justice. If you, even if you cast it once, you know, uh, Elves comes to mind or Stompy or... Or the Boros Tokens list. Like right, White Weenie. We, we, we played a matchup. I had Evan Carr's Justice in my deck. Even if I had just gone turn four, like, drop it, I think there were a couple, like, one of those games where it just would have wrecked you. Yeah, the only card that's in his core Sky Fisher, and there's only four copies of that in the deck, and you can easily deal with that with yeah. the removal. I mean, also, if you're swinging into the core sky fisher, even double rally the peasants doesn't really scare me that much. Right. Um, like, I can take a hit it's for like six. six. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, even Cards Justice in Tron is really strong. It does require some level of sacrifice, though, because Tron, at least how it used to be, didn't run hardly anything with more than two colored mana symbols in it. Right. Well, it, it's hard, right? You, you have a, a deck where the whole crux of its mana base is colorless mana, um, and you're inserting some very heavy mana requirements. And so, yeah, um, yeah, it, it sort of needs all that it can get. And you can kind of attack those colored mana sources even more than the Tron lands and yeah. probably still be fine. Like I, I normally bring an ancient grudge against Tron just to blow up their prophetic prisms. Yeah, and, and in this matchup, that might not even do it for you because if if they just go like gain land, gain land, and right. then start assembling Tron, the gain lands are, are a big deal. Yeah. Um, so as I said earlier, this kind of shifts you into I am playing a weird four color teachings list that also happens to have lands that sometimes tap for three mana. Uh, what are you getting with teachings out of this list? Uh, um, what are the instance? It's the in, uh, let, let's go back to the instance. So. <clears throat> Capsize, Condescend, Counterspell, Echoing Truth, Electricery, Lightning Bolt, Magma Spray, Mana Leak, Mystical Teachings, Pulse of Marasa. All right, that's pretty good. You can always tutor Pulse of Marasa. Yeah, so um, obviously the Even Cards Justice, well, it wasn't like he just slapped Even Cards Justice into an existing list. But I think it's worth examining for any deck that wants to play into the late game or has access to Tron. Because, you know, if you have Tron and two... Um, prof prisms or you know prof prism and a uh, uh, shimmering grotto you can just get this online like what turn three or four right yeah uh, probably turn four yeah um, and there as you said there's some decks that just can't come back from that like what does elves do against that they have to try and win faster I guess I don't know <laughs> um, and then you know if you having cars and then they have a vanguard left then you follow it up with a 
with an edict. Yeah, you yeah. Edict. yeah. yeah. it's like, what are you going to do? It's pretty good. Um, so, you know, again, even Curse of Justice, really good when you want to go into the late game. And in this list, you've got the mnemonic walls, right? right. So if Justice somehow gets countered and you didn't leave up a counter spell your own or, or you or if you just need to use it on turn four exactly if you just need to use it on turn four you like let's buy it back turn five yeah like like, like let's say you've just been like gain land gain land or black gain land black gain land tron piece one tron piece two and you just are like okay uh, the elves player is going off i need i need to snap it off um it does kind of highlight an issue with popper and the fact that we don't have a real wrath effect um, nah, right. it's fine. <laughs> Is it fine? I, uh, eh. I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I, I, I think it would be. I, I, uh, I, I don't want like a straight up Wrath of God. A straight up Wrath of God would be extreme. Would, I mean, you know, this is a format of all comments. Uh, an effect that just symmetrically wiped the board, I feel like might be a little too strong. Yeah. Um. Maybe something that's like minus three, minus three to all creatures like, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I'd, I'd be cool paying five for that effect. And just making sure that everything does stay dead. Um, but, you know, again, buyback, <laughs> buyback, not exactly the most fair mechanic, right? No, but I mean, and, and the cards it's on are really good cards, you know? Uh, well, here's the thing. Are they, the really, part. are they really good cards or is buyback just what makes them really good? I mean, they each do something that is good and then buyback makes it much better. I think the like, inter- like people run, people don't run boomerang, right? People run capsize, even though yeah. bo- boomerang does the exact same thing for less. Yeah, uh, although I can't, I, I know someone in the comments will correct me. I can't think of a non-buyback version of Justice. Two like, damage to all creatures? Yeah. I don't think there is one in Popper. And if, if there is, it just doesn't get played because why would you not pay the version that you can, you know, cast forever? Um, yeah, I can't think of one. Uh, the only thing I can think of that's close to that is Sandstorm. Sandstorm is one, though, isn't it? No, oh, Sandstorm is like five oh, no, 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 no. You, flying or You're something. thinking of Swirling Sandstorm. Yeah, that's it, Swirling yeah. Sandstorm. The one that does stone nothing if you don't have Threshold. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not like everyone can play with Desert. Yeah. Desert um, very good. D- d- desert actually probably OP, but... <laughs> actually, I, I, I should just show up with Desert at some point. I, I, ju- I, I just want to de- see it. Desert teachings. Yeah. Teachings. De- if the list from that uh, card kingdoms rags to riches ever get published because I can't seem to find them for the life of me. I'll probably th- toss that together. Aren't you third in your existing blue black alchemy deck? Um, I, th- I, I'm going to be honest with you. The fact that the mana in that deck is already kind of rough. Okay. Like, like you're trying to hit like double blue by turn two and preferably having black mana. So you can edict the next turn. Like, and top of that, you're playing like aqueducts, and you're playing colorless lands already. Right. I kind of, I kind of feel like teachings can get away with it because it doesn't want to do much of anything before turn four, besides like you know deal with dorks. Versus alchemy, which wants to be like, all right, turn three, we're you know alchemying, so next turn we can get a, a angler online. Hmm. Um, but we got a little sidetracked. Justice, very good card. Definitely something to consider if you're playing Tron. Um, it's just, it's just a board wipe. Just play it. Eat it, you dummy. <laughs> uh, we both went for it. Um, but let's transition to our discussion topic today. And this is going to be weird because usually that's the point where we'd break the episode because no one can see us. But you know, <laughs> you've we, we've we've gone down your foolhardy rabbit hole, and here yeah. we are. Oh, we're on video. No break. No break. <laughs> no breaks. <laughs> no breaks on the popper train. Um, today's topic, we're going to talk about um, getting into popper and building a collection for the format. And we, we do discuss this somewhat um, just in what the crossover cards might be in a yeah. given deck that we're doing. Um, but first, we'd like to start off with the resources. Um, uh, the best, in my opinion, the best and quickest way to get into a new format is to see what other people are already doing and to watch them do it. That's how I got into modern. That's how I got into legacy. And that's how I eventually got into popper. Uh, it's just way easier to see someone else doing all the work and then deciding what you like and what you think is good. And also, you know, you can look at a list all you want until you see it in action. Sometimes some of the lines aren't quite clear and you know, like there'll be, you know, all these little tricks that just don't 
aren't readily apparent to you. If you're, um, on, if you're on the subreddit, there's a link to some great resources there. Uh, obviously, we're the number one popper resource. <laughs> podcast, uh, but, at least. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely the number one podcast. Uh, but also, empty, uh, Magic Gathering Strat, a lot of good videos. They don't produce them as often as they used to. Still a great uh, source of content. Um, popper Fox, great deck techs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Ullman, great articles. Yep, uh, weekly on gatheringmagic.com. Um, there's Poppaganda who stream a bunch and occasionally put out videos on YouTube. And, uh, Jason Moore has dime a dozen. Yeah. Uh, I forget wh- where he's, uh, uh, I believe he's on, uh, MTGO Academy. Yes, that um, is correct. I'm trying to think of, uh, and he, he, he's, a, he's a great, great. He, he's one of the people I first started watching when I got into the format. Have we mentioned, uh, MTG Goldfish yet? Oh, no, we haven't. So uh, MTG Goldfish does, I believe it's the last month of results and you can look at the metagame breakdown. Um, it is kind of, you know, a good starting point, but not, you know... Right, as we've discussed in previous episodes, mm-hmm. uh, blah, 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 four ones not displayed, yada, yada, yada. Well, more importantly than that, you know, um, a lot of the time you want to be looking at statistics um, for for what Alex Allman refers to as seasons, where you get, um, where at each set or in the weird case, each emergency banning, <laughs> but um, you kind of you get a data point just so you can see the meta since the last time it changed. Also, Saffron Olive and Jake Styles both produce popper content for that yeah. website, and it's, it's very good. Saffron, um, Saffron Olive, not so much, but Jake Styles, I believe, is but he, but bi-weekly. He's done some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he has done some. He has talked on stream about enjoying playing teachings. So, you know, he has an understanding of the format. Perhaps not the deepest, but, you know, that's and I mean, even, even not really his gig, right? Even Channel Fireball has a couple popper videos. Yeah. If you look hard enough, you can see Chion or... Um, yeah, who was the other one? Uh, uh, was Sam, it Jacob Wilson? Yeah, it was Jake, I was going to say Sam Party, but yeah, it's Jacob Wilson. Um, I'll have popper videos. Um, and, and really, like, if you have friends, because obviously if you're listening to us, you, you may already be into the format. Um, yeah. But if you have friends who are interested, I would definitely recommend pointing them towards uh, other content creators. Mm-hmm. Also, content creators tend to be the most jazzed about the format that they're playing. True. Uh, especially true for popper, which is considered a niche format. Yeah. So, and there's actually a surprising amount of content for yeah, it. You yeah. know, there's even... Um, on YouTube, there's the um, the Italian popper leagues. Um, they are not in English, but they have coverage of live events, and you can kind of figure out what's going on. There are some videos there from when they were allowing people to play with him to Torok, which was disgusting. Yeah, widely considered um, to be a bad move. Um, <laughs> but they do really, really crisp content. Um, I don't speak Italian, and I still watch their videos when they come out. That that uh, just they're interesting enough without speaking the language, and I speak Spanish, which means I can kind of get what they're saying, but fumble through it a little. Yeah, I I, I can pick up words here and there. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll probably try and link a bunch of these down in the down below. Um, and I think some of them are already on our YouTube channel at the very least. Yeah. In our uh, other like you know people you may like section yep. there. Um. Also, you know, communities, there is a, there's the subreddit, which is kind of, you know, ground zero for new popper content. We post there every time we update an episode, um, you know, there are other discussion, other content creators put their stuff there. So, you know, it's kind of a, a, an index or, you know, a directory of popper content on the web. Um, there's also the Discord channel, which I believe now has a sidebar link on said subreddit. Um, it's a chat room, you know, talk live, live. I'm on there occasionally. Um, then there's also Magic Gathering Strat, or no, not Magic Gathering Strat, uh, MTG Salvation, I believe, has a popper and peasant forum. It's kind of a little on the dead side, but there are some primers on there, which, um, you know, some people prefer written to visual guides to decks. Um, but yeah, like going out there, YouTube is a great resource. Like I cannot stress that enough. Like seeing someone play through a deck and even if it's not like a full league, even if it's just like a couple of matches in tournament practice, the only way to play magic <laughs> online, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can jump in the leagues, chase them five O's them trophies. Uh, but you definitely get like a better feel for a deck once you've seen someone be like, all right, I'm playing through it and I'm giving you commentary. Um, Color commentary? Mm, yes. He did it. He said the name of the podcast. That's the name. That's the name of the thing you're watching. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but 
and I mean, obviously, we we've talked about it before. We're probably going to try and get into streaming a little bit more. Yeah, that's the that's the the dream that never quite dies, but never quite happens, right? Um, since I am moving soon, and uh, I just moved. Yeah, and you just moved. It's been 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 a little rough. My desktop actually isn't even assembled currently, so yeah, I've never um, put it. And I'm actually once I move to Boston and start my new job and start having you know steady cash flow instead of freelance work, I'm probably just going to buy a PC because I'm a dirty, scummy Mac user. Um, Get <laughs> out. <laughs> um, but moving on, um, building a collection. So right, this is the other important part. I yeah. Guess. I guess having cards to play with is, is the thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and this applies a little bit to online, but you know, my experience with building a collection is mostly in paper. Um, right, and but but before we get into that, I just want to interrupt you real fast. Um, Alex did give us some great advice. Uh, every time a new big set gets released, uh, you can buy a deck builder's toolkit. If you buy yes. two of them, you have four of every common in, that has just come out in that set. And it's what? It's like five bucks or yeah, it's ten? Like, it's like ten bucks. Well, it's it's five each. I want to say oh, so yeah. it's like ten for both of them. So then, so for ten dollars, you just get every common in the set. Right now, that's only for big sets. Like there's none of the, that's like that for like uh, EMA or you know. Did, is it just standard legal sets or is it just big standard legal sets? It's like am only I, big, like there will not be one for Aether Revolt. That's weird. Yeah. I, I don't personally care for that as a business decision, but you know, right. I don't run wizards. But um, uh, that's a good way to quickly stock up a collection online when a new big set gets released. Oh, but sorry, go ahead with yeah. your uh, paper collection. All building. right. All right. So, so when you're building a collection, A, there's a lot of cards in this format. Um, I think I did the math out and there's about a, thousand cards give or take that are you know playable right and i i'm i can do air quotes i'm doing air quotes for people listening along at home without video um loose playables there's about a thousand and at four copies of card that's four thousand cards that, that that's a lot of magic cards um so i track my collection in a spreadsheet um and one of the big things is figuring out what do i buy first like do, do I just buy a deck first or do I want to, you know, come in and say, I would like to be able to play any deck in this format. I think most people when they first get into a format are going to pick one deck. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you want to, you know, you can build up a collection. So, you know, you can, you can play more than that one deck, but that would be my suggestion. I have like five at this point. <laughs> See, here's the interesting thing. You say I have five decks. If you ask me how many decks I own right now, it's three. I have three decks that are assembled and I have enough to build most of the format if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is I basically do what you do on Moto. Um, you buy your four copies of a card and those are the four copies you need. And then I swap them in between. Um, so the question is like, okay, I've bought my first deck. I've fallen in love with Popper. I think it's a sweet format. What, th what staples should I pick up? so that I can play a whole bunch of decks. It, we, we've done the math. It's practically all sideboard cards. Yeah. You should. Um, you really need to invest in sideboards because those are basically the, the one thing that stays consistent over all decks. Yeah, and I think one of the big things is if you're trying to like build up a collection, try and knock out expensive cards that show up in a bunch of decks. Like right before this, we were talking like Oubliette in paper is a whopping $28. It is... I believe the most expensive card in Popper. But you, but you don't really need them unless you're not playing mono black. Exactly. It, it's playable in one deck. So wouldn't you rather have four Chainers edicts? Exactly. And that actually actually Chainers has dropped a little bit, but it but it's close in price. And there's a great example. You know, you probably want your Chainers edicts. You probably want um, your lightning bolts, your counter spells. And a, a really easy way to look up what the most popular cards are is to go to MTG Goldfish, a resource we already mentioned. And not only can you just cruise decks and see what cards are popular, but you can also go to uh, like 10 most popular cards in the format list. And Spoiler see, alert, they're all blue. I think Lightning Bolt is in there. Oh, probably. Which is, um, it's basically a, a blue spell. Yeah, um, so it, a, a lot of... Color shifted Psychic Blast. <laughs> is Psychic Blast actually... It's four damage for... Like, it, uh, it's char, a weird char is actually the color shifted Psychic Blast. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm just pulling it up. So... On MTG Goldfish, it's under um, decks and then format staples, and then you select popper. So looking here right now, you're going to want your Pyroblasts, a sideboard card that is in every red deck. That's a color-shifted Hydroblast. 
<laughs> I think they came out together. I don't think it counts. Yeah, they, they um, did. Prophetic Prism, cheap, but it goes in almost any sort of mid range there, deck that needs to fix mana. There are so many Prophetic Prisms in Popper. Yeah. Um, so many. Hydroblast, again, a sideboard card that just slots into a blue deck. Um, Lightning Bolt, Electricery, Galvanic Blast, actually, right now. Dude, there's one blue card on this list now. That's crazy. Ah, uh, hold on. Counterspell, Preordain, Chromatic Star, oh, okay. Gleeful Sabotage. So, right now, we're a little flooded with Affinity, but I will point out the um, the blue one mana cantrips, um, specifically Ponder and Preordain. You probably want your playset of those pretty quickly. You know, the good ones. Um, Brainstorm, you can pick up later. It only goes in a few decks. Um, Angler Delver. And th- these cards are really cheap. Like Preordain and Ponder are like dollar, yeah, $2 they, cards. At they, the most. They, they actually, I can pull that up because I have a computer here. Um, yeah, actually, Preordain is almost $2. Almost $2 but um, they are not expensive for a playset. And if you are looking to invest in this format heavily, you will run these in a lot of decks. Right. Um, it, it's one of those things like, if you really want to play mono black, you probably should pick up your uh, oubliettes. If you don't plan to play mono black for a while, that is fifty six bucks that you could use on other staples. Um, I'm looking through here. Uh, other notables: uh, Quarian Ranger goes in Elves and Stompy. Um, Nettle Sentinel also Elves and Stompy. Scattershot Archers, great green sideboard card. Um, really, what you can do is just go through your collection and see what you already have. Yeah, that's um, what I did. And there's a lot of this stuff, a lot like there, there's like, I'd want to say like probably 10% of popper staples account for probably 90% of the price. Right. And because like even chromatic stars up to almost four bucks. Um, but then a large majority of these cards, you go in TCG player and you pay like 15 cents a copy at most. Um, now, you know, some people not naming names like to foil stuff out. I personally don't. Because I'd rather and be able to play. Some people not naming names are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I foil out cube stuff, but um, I I am working towards a complete popper collection. Now, once you've got a lot of your staples, what you can do is, or at least what I do, is when a new set drops, I go on to TCG Player after the pre-release is over and the actual release has happened, and. I already have a list waiting. Like, like I like I basically sat down and I've looked through the spoiler and I've said, these, you know, 20 cards are things I want to pick up. And if you do like a little bit after release weekend, commons are at like five cents a piece. Yeah, man. No one likes commons. It's weird. Well, also with the increased print runs for paper, I go on to TCG player. And I think last time, I spent for the Kaladesh update to my collection. I think I spent seven bucks. The Kala refresh. Ooh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that one for a uh, for an episode title at some point. Good. Um, (laughs) um, but you know the goal the goal here would be you know once you have the entire up to date collection that you want, moving forward you're only gonna spend like that seven. Or less dollars every time a set releases. Right. And yeah. And Popper is a very easy set to stay on top of. Yeah. So. I, I mean, especially given that it is an eternal format and the bar for a card being good is so high. Like, what did you buy out of Kaladesh? Gear Seeker Serpents. Uh, Renegade Freighters, too. Oh, yeah. I got Renegade Freighters. I got, I got rec- some Reckless Fire Weavers. I yeah. got some stuff. Yeah. Got them all in foil. It was How much cheap. did you spend? Less than five bucks, maybe. Yeah. That, that was the point I was driving at here. And I'm the dude sitting here who's like, okay, Dramatic Reversal seems like it might be playable someday. I'll, I'll toss four copies. Of dramatic that Reversal in. seems actually really good. It's just that we can't really break it very easily. There's no home for it yet. Um, for those who forgot, Dramatic Reversal is one in a blue, instant, untap all non-land permanents you control. Um, I, think, I think during our review set, we talked about like tossing it in elves as like a way to like double your mana. Um, so again, with a collection, once you're established, you can just kind of, you know, pick out the best of the best and just kind of, you know, sift through everything else. Um, and that's really useful, right? Like you don't have to really worry 
about the cost of the format after a while. Like at that point, and also, you know, in paper, you know, you got to buy sleeves, right? And you got to have your basics and, you know, these minor things. But once you got your staples in, out of the way and you start filling in your collection, eventually it's going to become a hobby where it's like every couple months you spend seven bucks. Mm-hmm. Like that's what? Good stuff. Is, is that even the price of a movie ticket anymore? No. Movie tickets are like $15, <laughs> Mike. I thought you went to movies all the time. I, I, I do, but I also don't pay a whole lot of attention. I mean, they're not 15 but they're high. Yeah. They're yeah. high. Like like for the cost of, hell, a, a burger and fry, like, a, like a, a meal with a burger at like a fast food place. At least Those are also kind of expensive now. Eh, it's like seven bucks of the Whataburger. I don't know what you're getting. Maybe like a kid's meal. Nah, nah. Burger, and burger, fries, and a, a drink. Um, but, you know, point is, seven bucks, not a whole lot to stay on top of a format. Right. Um, and it's eternal, so, you know, th- things rarely get banned either. Like, I actually didn't buy Peregrine Drakes. And even if I did, I would have been out what? Um, they were like a buck fifty when they first showed up online, the new one. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would be out $6. Um and online, some of these cards are even cheaper. Now, online, there is also the drawback of some stuff being way more expensive. That's like, um, not very common and popular, though. Get it's it. not. It's not super common, but like, get it? Ha ha! You did it. Um, <laughs> what's days at these days? Is it like seven bucks? I'd imagine. Yeah, something like that. It's not. It that used. High. It used to be twenty five dollars, though. Yeah, it used to be a lot. Uh, it used to. It used to be so high that like people would play for spike instead still a defendable choice i still think it's a defendable choice um but you know people were doing that just for budgetary reasons not like even saying like you know i think i don't think days is good it was just like yeah no i, I don't want to spend 25 dollars on a card for popper um and obviously gorilla shaman is a huge culprit um the pyron hydroblast were quite expensive up until recently um they dropped quite a bit with eternal masters yep um Basically, if you see a card that was only printed in like Mercadian Masks block or Master old Masters sets, you're probably going to have a high price tag. But apart from that, like I want to say it's actually cheaper to buy into it online. I like having the physical cards. I like playing people in real life. It's also much easier to play with people online. It is like one of the one of the downsides of moving to somewhere where I don't think there is an established popper scene is I'm not going to be able to play popper in person as much, but I should be able to play popper more online. Right. And, you know, I like the social interaction aspect of it, but you know, I still want to be able to play a format that I, that I really like. Um, so let's recap, uh, getting started, watch content, specifically gameplay stuff, you know, being able to hear someone talk through their logic process as to why they're playing in a certain way can help you understand a deck way better. Like you can definitely like look at a list and be like, okay, well this affinity list runs a bunch of stuff with affinity for artifacts, but you know, what's your favorite trick with affinity? The, the, the goofy thing with thought cast, right? Right. You can announce thought cast as a spell and then sack an artifact. If you have to pay the blue cost and still get the full affinity cost. Yeah, you announce the spell first. Yeah, there's a lot of little little things. Playing at Spring Leaf Drums first is a big one. Yeah. A lot of little things. Yeah, and, and just being able to see that before, you know, you invest in a deck. Because even though they're not all expensive, like, stock affinity, like, with just, you know, cheapest versions of each card still has to be about, like, 60 bucks, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not nothing, you know. It, it, Everything is yeah. worth something in the end. Yeah, I, there's definitely cheaper options, you know. Um, and especially online, like, what is it? Burn is always hovers between like five and ten dollars is the cheapest deck online it's like three, oh yeah it's like three dollars or something teachings is, is bafflingly cheap online when in person it's like actually kind of pricey yeah um, Te- teachings is ridiculously cheap yeah um and anyone everyone will just hate you forever <laughs> people salt that over teachings real hard they do um because somehow counter spells are quote less fun than kill spells sure <laughs> um so watch people play, figure out what they're doing to make the decks work and what doesn't make decks work. Um, 
keep keep up to date. Read articles, you know, about metagame. Read articles, you know, primers that people have written on decks that they've made. Um, post your deck online and ask people to critique it if it's a brew. You know, getting that feedback can be completely invaluable, right? Just having someone be like, hey, this card could be better. Or there's a strict upgrade to one of the cards in your deck. You should probably run that instead. Right. Like, let's say, you know, you didn't, you weren't paying a bunch of attention. You put in Cruel Edict, and that's just a worse Chainer's Edict. Although it um, is a vegetarian consideration, I guess. Yeah. But then you might as well just run Diabolic because it's an instant. Yeah. Yeah. It, if you're going for budgetary stuff with uh, your Edicts, you're going to want to go with Diabolic. Um, and then with respect to building a collection, you know, try and tick off staples that go in a bunch of decks. Your bolts, your cantrips, your delvers, your, you know, things that go in a bunch of lists. You know, you can buy the little stuff first, but like like in Legacy, they always tell you, buy your duels and your lands first because they're the biggest part of it. And they're also the most expensive part. Yeah, yeah. And it, well, also the deck doesn't function well without them. Right. And then you can kind of fill in the rest as you go. But kind of trying to get the big expensive stuff that actually will be played. Because in our format, the lands are cheap, barring the Tron lands. Y- you still need all of them, though. You still get all the game lands and the bounce lands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, a gr- it's a great pl- place Ash to start. Barons. Ash Ash Barons is actually a very real thing to grab now. Like, mm-hmm. People have really responded well to that card, and I'm super excited about it. Um, it lets splashes be way easier. It's not a dead card late in the game. Because... Um, Drawing a Terramorphic Expanse late in the game is miserable. Like, when you know it's not going to do anything. Right. Um, it's just awful. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, knockout lands, knockout staples, and then you're just picking up, like, small things along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, some examples of things that I might wait on... Um, Ancient Stirrings really only shows up in one version of Tron. Um, you know, what else? Uh, I'm trying to think of niche things. Um, Chromatic Sphere only shows up in Rug Tron, but your stars you're probably going to want to get because they're in Tron and Affinity. Um, come on, help me out here, buddy. What, what other... I think... Is, uh, I mean, Battle Screech. Battle Screech is not a super commonly played card, and it's kind on the pricey side in paper. Yeah, it's like three or four dollars. I just got mine. Worth um, it. What else? Oh, buy your mold drifters. Lo- Lotus Petal. Oh, lo- Lotus Petal is a great example. You don't need Lotus Petals. <laughs> Lotus Petal goes into two decks that I've seen. One is Glass Cannon Red, which I think is terrible, and the other one is um, One Land Spy. Spy. Yeah. The worst popper deck ever. And they're six bucks in paper. And they're actually pricey online as well, right? Uh, yeah, they're like, you know, 12 tickets maybe. They're up Oof. there. They're expensive. So they're actually they're actually twice the price of paper ones is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I don't know. They're they're kind of expensive. I'm trying I don't remember exactly how much they are, but yeah, don't don't get lotus petals. Yeah, that that's exactly the type of thing where you can be like, okay. I don't need this now. Because they seem they seem cool, but like really they're just not that good outside of Storm, and Storm's not a thing in Popper. I, I actually own a playset of them. I don't know why. I have um, a playset of them because I thought they'd be good. <laughs> and it turns out they're not. Yeah, they're, they're just, just <laughs> Although you, you could run them in Affinity, you know. I mean, but then you're you're sacrificing I don't know. What would you yeah, I don't like them in Affinity. You're sacrificing too much. I feel like you'd almost rather run Manamorphos just so you can if you really want to run a deck that has four or less cards in it. Um or probes because in affinity you need to keep around artifacts you don't want to be yeah. cracking them um except for fixing right um but th- i think that's a great example um also oubliette you know goes in one deck if you really want to play mono black and i guess you know for lotus petal if you really want to play one land spy for whatever reason <laughs> you know i'm I, I i tried to phrase that as non-judgmentally as possible you know i didn't really want want to come off as judgy but if, yeah if you already play magic chances are a lot of your cards are actually common you just don't know it yeah that's true that, that's the other thing like uh double checking and you know making sure because brainstorm just got reprinted on common didn't it yeah um 
Lightning bolts but I just mean like, occasionally. Like, yeah, like lightning bolts, a great example. Galvanic blast is a great example. Spring leaf drum. Like basically a lot of the key cards in modern affinity, you can also play in popper. Yeah, a decent amount of them. Um, y- yeah, again, like just, just kind of looking through and comparing with your collection and some of the stuff like um, I recently sold off a bunch of my bulk cards and I did like a one last pass through them to make sure there wasn't anything I wanted. I think I found like 20 different like things I was missing for popper. Nice. Like 20 different cards and none of them were worth much, but you know, it, it, I have them and they're in a box now where they're organized um, and safe. That's the other thing. Organizing your collection, please, please just do it. It saves you so much time. Mine's like not organized. I know. I, I waste a lot of time looking <laughs> for stuff though. Um, like, like mine, I have little, I printed out custom dividers for, I have, I have my cards sorted by cup. Co- by color and then by um card type so like i can quickly go like all right i need um i need a curse of the bloody tome blue enchantments are here pull up pull the f- divider forward and then flick through and find it and coincidentally there are not a whole lot of blue enchantments so pretty easy to find um there's aura flux there's aura flux there's jace's erasure there's dragon wings um i have hermetic study in my collection for some reason Mystic um, study I also, do not. I do not have Ristic Study. There's another example. It's five dollars. Mm-hmm. They don't need Ristic no deck study. plays it. Um, but yeah, like keeping your collection organized. Like you don't need to like be like me and be completely anal and have like all matching sleeves and like custom dividers that you printed up. Um, but you should. <laughs> but but just organizing your stuff so that way you can be like, okay, well, I need these white cards. That's they're probably around here, or you know. And also alphabetizing, so you can be like, all right, looking for my core sky fishers, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, uh, K, there we go, core sky fishers. Um, it will save you so much time if you are a completionist like me. Um, so I yeah. should order some core sky fishers so I can give you back yours. Yeah. It, surprisingly, the one thing our game store was out of the other night when you had to place your order. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like I need foils anyway. Foils are actually cheap. Uh, you, you should pick up, uh, there's a media promo that has the Magic the Gathering website as its flavor text in bold. Yeah, I've seen them. They look they, they look really awkward, and I like them. Mm, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Um, all right. Well, we're pulling up on an hour, and uh, I've got to edit this in video now, which I'm not super stoked about. But hopefully you enjoyed the video, you know feel free to leave comments, you know, telling us that you enjoyed the video or if you didn't just be like, yeah, no, wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, move on. If you're on audio only, then, you know, maybe check out our YouTube, maybe subscribe to us there. Um, it's not exactly the most exciting yeah, video. Um, hopefully, you know, if this gets a good response and, you know, I can figure out a better way to handle things. Um, we might have, you know, card images pop up on the screen. So, you know, a little bit more, uh, help there but right we'll we'll figure things out um adrian want to take us out yes give me the script thanks for joining us today check below this video or in the description of this podcast for details and where to find us we'd like to remind you that if you're listening to this on a platform with reviews they're always appreciated as they boost our visibility if you've got a deck list or idea for a topic feel free to contact us via our website or by emailing us directly at color commentary at gmail.com Special thanks to Pat's Games and L. Till next week, this is Adrian and Mike signing off for Color Commentary.